So if you click this video and think, I recognise that title. Also, Carl, didn't you do this bit last week in the other video? And aren't you wearing the same outfit? Congratulations to you for being a viewer who watches all the videos. You guys are great. You're keeping this channel going. But yes, this is a re-upload of a previous video we've already done because unfortunately, the previous video was demonetized because a company called MGM felt like they deserved all the money it earned. Didn't they, Brad? Yeah. Yeah, and this one was a particular sore spot for us as creators because if people don't know, like, uh, Robocop the film, which is what apparently our MGM took exception to us using clips from, wasn't made by MGM. It was made by Orion Studios, which closed, unfortunately, sometime in the late 90s, I believe. And then MGM just absorbed them. So now they own Robocop, despite not having anything to do with it. Which I guess is probably why they thought they could monetize our video. So, oh wow, it's got Robocop in it. Well, we didn't make it, we're going to claim the money anyway. Because that's our modus operandi, apparently. <laughs> it's also not the first time they've claimed it on our no, channel, No, they it? previously claimed the Robocop commentary I did. Which literally uses nothing from Robocop, except... The Orion logo! The Orion logo! <laughs> But because that appears in Robocop, they apparently own it. And that is literally just me talking over a like a completely like an image of Robocop's like theatrical like poster about how much I love Robocop. <laughs> I think what happened is some guy saw the, yeah, the first five seconds. Saw that I'd put in a clip for people to use to sync up the commentary. Yeah, saw that it was exactly as long as Robocop is and thought that's the entire movie you with him talking over it. Movie on YouTube. And watched five seconds demon that one's also demonetized, but we thought, fuck it. There's no point trying to fight. I'm not re-recording the entire commentary track again. But yeah, that, the thing that annoyed me and Brad the most about it though is the copyright like strike claim that we had to deal with because we've never dealt with this far. It's usually when we get copyright strikes. We've only had it happen a handful of times. We'll challenge it and then the company will immediately back down. It's only happened like they've not backed down once or twice. But when we did this, they said like a copyright strike by MGM on this video. I thought, who the fuck's MGM? Oh shit, they absorbed the Ryan picture. They own Robocop. Okay, um... Would you like to counter this claim? That's a little option you get. And we put, obviously, yes. We don't want MGM to get all the money for the video we made. We would like to challenge this claim. So that happened. And then a week later, we got a thing saying, your claim has been denied. Would you like to take this further? And I obviously thought, of course I fucking do. This is obviously fair use. So I click it and it says, give a rationale for why you think this video shouldn't be copyright striked. And I went, because it's fair use. We're using the clips in the video. They're obviously be there for the purpose of commentary critique. And then I assumed, Brad, and you must have assumed, like, what would you think would happen in that situation? They send, like, you know, the video off to an outside arbiter, or maybe someone at YouTube who can make, like, you know, an informed decision about whether or not it's copyright friendly, or if it is fair use, or if we are taking the piss. Audience at home, do you want to know who got to make the final decision on whether MGM kept all the money from the video they had nothing to do with the making of? <laughs> MGM. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know if this is the thing, because, like, you read the same email I got, and we both stared at it for a very long time, going, is this real? Is this actually what YouTube did? Did they really ask MGM, the company who filed the complaint in the first place, is this complaint valid? What are they going to say? What are the what are the answer are they going to give? Of course they're going to say, yes, we would like all the money this video makes forever. Those guys suck. YouTube is asking them to be the ultimate arbiter of that decision. And like their decision apparently is final, so we can no longer challenge that original copyright claim without getting a copyright strike on our channel, three of which, if people don't know, will delete it forever. So if we get three copyright strikes, channel's gone, fact fiend's done, me and Brad are out of a job. So obviously, we don't want to do that, so what we've done instead is recorded this video where we upload the same video without any clips that MGM can claim. And obviously, while we appreciate people watching this bit, we understand no one's watched the same video again, so what me and Brad are going to do now is talk about Robocop and Brad's going to put in where the Robocop clips are in the original video, just me and him talking about Robocop. Because I love Robocop, don't I Brad? Like Brad knows, I fucking love Robocop. It's one of my favourite movies of all time. I could talk about Robocop all fucking day. But you and did, I, there's a two hour commentary. There is, and I assumed, <laughs> thinking like, oh yeah, the people who own it will see, it's obviously fair use. And like, it basically amounts to a 15 minute ad of me saying, go watch Robocop. It's on Netflix right now, it's awesome. And I don't want to do that. I should also point out as well, there'll be other clips from other people who didn't give a fuck that we use them. And those guys are awesome. I believe Futurama. So whoever owns that 20th Century Fox, they didn't give a shit. Those guys are awesome. Go watch Futurama. Uh, Paramount, one of them was. Yeah, Paramount Beverly Hills Cop with a little clip of Ronnie Cox before he became Dick Jones in Robocop. 
They didn't give a fuck. Go watch the latest Mission Impossible movie, I suppose. That's the thing they put out. They flexed on Isn't Man vs. Steel. Bumblebee their most recent one? There we go. Go watch Bumblebee. There's some free advertising for you, uh, Paramount <laughs> Pictures, because you didn't copyright strike our channel. <laughs> I like how you will only advertise if it's a fuck you to someone else. Yeah, because like, we don't advertise on this channel, but I feel like the idea of this giant monolithic company shitting on a little guy. I, like, especially in a video where all I talk about is how awesome Robocop is, and they demonetize it and say, we want all the money. It's like, oh. I love, I love how as well, you've literally uploaded a commentary which will not work unless somebody will go out and buy the special edition of Robocop to watch with it. Because the version that's on Netflix and online is usually a theatrical cut, which isn't the version I did a commentary track for, and I sit in the commentary track, and I encourage people in it, in the one they demonetized, <laughs> saying, Go buy Robocop. This film's awesome. I am now going to talk about all the cool facts about the making of this movie. So enjoy the rest of the video and I apologise for any awkward cuts there are because we have had to just like, you know, excise all clips of Robocop that were in the original video. But they've been replaced by just clips of me and Brad chatting shit about Robocop and how awesome it is. And if you want to watch the movie, I encourage you to, if you're in the UK, or I believe the US as well, it's on Netflix right now. So go watch it because MGM get less money that way, I believe. And if you don't want to watch it on Netflix, uh, type in Robocop HD Watch Online on Google. I'm sure there's a version there you can watch where MGM get no money. <laughs> Copyright strike this, you fucking knobheads. <laughs> I dare you. I fucking dare you. Please put in the challenge out there. I fucking dare you. We can get three copyright strikes before we're dead. We haven't got any yet. So fuck, I will die on this hill. I will die for Robocop. So I see we're talking about Robocop today. Uh-huh. The beautiful remake film. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about 1982 Robocop, man. Let's roll. The best Robocop. Perhaps no character in fiction has ever died as hard as Mr. Kinney does in Robocop. A character who, for anyone who doesn't remember, is shot like 80,000 times in the chest, face and penis by a bipedal robot with gun hands. A death, it turns out, was nowhere near violent enough for director Paul Verhoeven, who called the actor playing Kinney back in just to shoot him again. It's been a while since I've watched Robocop. Who was Kinney? Well, he's the guy who gets shot by Ed 209, if you remember the introduction, Brad. And if you don't have, like, the IMDB page Robocop commit to memory like I do, um, Kinney was played by an actor called Kevin Page, who is a prolific extra and TV actor, whose most notable role is that of the guy who gets blown the fuck away in Robocop, which is glorious, and I love it. To be fair, it's a good thing to have on your CV, isn't that it? That is an amazing thing to have on your CV. And apparently Kevin Page fucking loves that he's the guy who got blown away by Ed 209. That's like his most famous role. And every now and again on like his Twitter and his actual website, he'll just post pictures of himself from behind the scenes. Like, oh, here I am after like the 45th squib went off. <laughs> just giving a big old goofy thumbs up. He fucking loves it, man. It's like the whole thing, isn't it? If you're going to be in a movie as an extra, you don't want to be like the guy who just stands there and points. You want to be the guy who gets like absolutely fucking wrecked. You want to be the guy from Scanners who gets his head blown off, don't you? You don't want to be like some extra in the background. If you're in a zombie movie or like Walking Dead, you want to be that zombie who gets fucking rocked by the main characters. People remember that yeah. specific thing. People don't remember guy in background. People remember though, guy who gets blown the fuck away by Ed 209. <laughs> So as you can probably tell by the fact I've suddenly got a tattoo, if you skip the first six minutes of this video, <laughs> straight to the content, this is the extra bonus bit we mentioned in that introduction where we are going to talk about Robocop, aren't we Brad? We are. Because obviously Robocop's awesome, I encourage everyone to go watch it. Just type in Robocop HD, watch online, trust me. <laughs> Stop encouraging piracy. I'm not encouraging privacy, I'm encouraging people to watch Robocop. <laughs> it's not, I, I can't be held accountable for what other people do. Yeah, and if you type Which in is watch, what every watch online full on. HD Robocop, it should come up with sites where you can buy it. Obviously. Yeah, surely yeah. Like, MGM must mean. have like, you know, paid, because they clearly care so much about the Robocop brand. They you know, ordered that reboot that sucked. God, oh man, that, that remake was so bad. <laughs> Do you know what like, the worst bit about the remake for me? It's, it's the hand, isn't it? You it's like the hand. hand. Yeah. The hand is so like stupid. Do you know well, why? Because they explained it in a deleted scene. So the deleted scene in the 2014 movie with Michael Keaton where someone tells him, we can save like, Alex Murphy's like hand should we replace it with a robot part? And he goes, no, 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 let him keep the hand because my dad always told me that you can trust a guy based on his handshake. So the idea there is that Robocop can always shake someone's hand. The problem is, in the original Robocop movie, they have that exact same conversation. Someone goes to Bob Morton, oh, we can save like, you know, the right arm, should we? And Bob Morton goes, why the fuck would we do that? That's a, 
obvious weak point when we can replace it with this completely indestructible, super badass robo arm. Get rid of it all. I want total body prosthesis. And it's basically, so, right, right, so now, this is future version of Robocop is walking around with the most obvious weak point ever. With the thing he used to shoot his gun. If any bullets ricochet off his completely indestructible body, his main way of attacking people is now completely removed. And the fact that they've deleted that scene, and that is a reference to the original Robocop where they just shit on the idea, where Bob Morton goes, that's fucking stupid. Why would you leave any human parts on Robocop at all? Why would you leave? The reason we're building him is because he's superior to a human. Why would you leave the human part on him? So they even say, I think, in the second movie, where they say, like, the face that Robocop has, you think, oh, a joke is, oh, why don't you shoot Robocop in the face? That's not a real face. It's, like, it's Alex Murphy's face that they stretch over a metal skull. So the skull underneath is completely bulletproof, but it's like a real face, but there's no human parts to it. His eyes are, like, not real eyes. They're just cameras that look like eyes. So even if you shot Robocop in the face or the mouth, it wouldn't hurt him, because underneath is the same indestructible material that makes up the rest of his outfit. They just gave him that, so I think the way they explain it in one of the novels is when Alex Murphy, the brain, looks into a mirror, he sees a human face. Otherwise, he'd be like so disassociated with what he is, he wouldn't be able to like, you know, see himself as human anymore. But yeah, no, fuck all that nuance. Give a guy two guns and make him fight Rorschach. Awesome. <laughs> Joe, you know my absolute favourite thing, though, about like Kevin Page's role was Mr. Kinney in Robocop? Yeah. That was his first ever acting gig. That was like his first foray into the world of acting. He turned up like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on his first day of shooting. So, Mr. Verhoeven, really nice to work with you. Loved your previous work. What do you want me to do? Lie down on that table and we're going to blow you the fuck away. <laughs> so, you see those squibs over there and those squibs there and then that 300 squibs over there, you're putting all them on. Go lie down on that table. <laughs> He's like, yes, sir, Mr. Verhoeven, sir. So, he, oh man, what an acting gig that is. I love it. It's great. Well, it's definitely a good one to have. Like, it's not, but like, he, he, did, he, did get, yeah, he did get to act alongside like, Ronnie Cox, who's fucking awesome, like, who obviously plays Dick Jones in the movie. So it's not like he didn't have good acting experience, it's just great that his very first acting role is, is a character you know is not coming back in the sequel. <laughs> oh, I've got the script, where's mine? He flips over one page. Oh. <laughs> As an aside, because I love Ronnie Cox and I love the story behind his casting, I always assumed that because obviously my first experience with him as an actor is the film Robocop. He's a character actor who just plays evil dickish CEOs. It's like, no, it was the exact opposite. Paul Verhoeven cast him specifically because prior to that, he'd only played nice guys on TV. And you better find like, see if you find like, an early clip of him in something like before Robocop, where he's just playing a nice guy. And he said, it'd be funny to get this guy who's mostly known as being like a super nice guy in all of his films and TV shows. It's just an arsehole CEO. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he owns the role really well. So that's really good casting right there, man. Ronnie Cox. He's <laughs> looking at me, just evil. He's so evil. It's evil as hell. He's so evil looking, his old Ronnie Cox. It's great. It's like Clarence Boddicker. It's the guy, like, Clarence Boddicker, like the main bad guy. He later went and played the, the dad from fucking set that 70s show. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. <laughs> I love that 70s show. Like, Kurt Wood Smith is a fucking fantastic actor. But the idea that he went from playing like this super evil drug dealing murderer to just like a nice dad on that 70s show. It's great. I love you, Kurt Wood Smith. Never stop. Do you know the thing that pissed me off the most though about the Robocop remake? What? It's the data spike being removed from Robocop. Do you know, in the original, he's got like, just fist knife that he used to interact with computers. Yeah. And he just fist bumps computers to interact with them. That's awesome and that saves his life. And I like the idea of like, you know, you can symbolically look at language. Yeah, the thing he uses to like access the files that reveal that he's a mur like that Bodica murdered him is the thing he used to like, you know, bring like Bodica to justice. The fact the evidence is what kills Bodica, realistically. Like, no, nah, fuck it. Give him a human hand so he can like, you know, touch his son. I'm I'm surprised that he's handing it open up and have like USB drives and stuff. <laughs> then he tries to put it in and it goes around the opposite. The thing is, the data spike is more useful than a real USB. You know it's dangerous, and you probably won't get that shit on a plane, but I bet you up with a data spike, which is just a knife. I bet you never put that in the wrong way around, because you can't. Let's just take a couple of steps back. You wouldn't get that thing on a plane. This is Robocop we're talking no, I mean, about. No, like, the thing that they have, because obviously he interacts with the computer. Yeah. So they must have a similar device 
that obviously other police officers use to access that computer. I kind of just assume why would they just... give Robocop a unique uh, device that somehow was compatible with all the police computers? I assume he just stabbed it into a device and then he was able to hook like hook into whatever. So, but why is there an opening for that's exactly the right is size? Is there an exact opening? Yeah. In the police computer. It's like R2-D2, he's yeah. always able to interact with everything. So I've always assumed that data spikes were a real thing in that universe. It's just that Robocop has one built into his arm. And I always thought, that's way better than a USB. Because how many times you put USB in upside down? Would you do that if you had to stab your computer? <laughs> if he says, oh, Brad, when you're uploading this footage later, what do you need to do to put it in? It's like, yeah! Just pop it like knife crime, your computer, man. That should be awesome. Moving back to the death of Mr. Kinney, the story goes that when he was watching an early cut of the movie, director Paul Verhoeven didn't think the death was gory enough in comparison to some of the other death scenes in the film. Which is a fair point, considering in this movie there is a guy who gets all of his flesh melted off by acid and is then exploded when he gets hit by a car travelling to Mach 3. And also another scene in which the titular Robocop shoots the guy's penis off. Because it's going to get mentioned a bunch of times, I'm aware of the fact there is that stupid scene someone filmed from the My Robocop movie, where they remade that scene and Robocop shoots like 40 different people in the penis. We're not putting a clip of that in because we're going to get it demonetized immediately. I'm aware it exists though, don't mention it in the comments. I know it's a thing. So what did Verhoeven do about this? What he did is, at great expense, rebuilt the entire OCP office set and then brought Kevin Page back in. And he even went as far as to bring Ed 209 back in as well so you get more reaction shots of the robot shooting him. And then proceeded to just load Page up with squibs and then just film him getting shot some more. But that was a fun phone call to get. <laughs> yeah, like, um, Page would say like, yeah, two months after filming Wrapped, I assume obviously my job's done. And I got a phone call saying we need you back in for reshoots. He didn't realise how literal, obviously, that statement was until he turned up for the day. But holy shit, what a great phone call for that guy. And the best part is, well, like, Paige is really proud of that because he said, like, they loaded me up with about 200 squibs, which I believe is a record. Uh, I'm not sure if the record still stands, but he maintains that's a record uh, for filming at the time for amount of squibs attached to a single actor. <laughs> While this did result in a far more impressive death scene for Page's character, Verhoeven was still not convinced it was as violent as it could be, and tasked the effects crew with making it so Page's character died just that little bit harder. How did they go about doing this? Well, the effects crew found their solution in the form of spaghetti, which apparently they were eating on the day of filming for lunch, and they went, hang on a sec, this looks kinda like guts. So what they did is they dressed up Page back in his character's costume again, rebuilt the set again, cleaned up all the blood, loaded him up with even more squibs and then shoved a load of spaghetti and fake blood up his shirt and then lied him down again and then had Ed 209 shoot him a few more times and then got that shot which apparently sated Paul Verhoeven bloodlust <laughs> because obviously the shot now looked like his guts had just been ripped out of his body by the squibs because you just see bits of flesh or appears to be flesh flying out all over the joint and it looks awful like I'm sorry if anyone was squeamish but we've got to put these clips in to demonstrate what we're talking about but oh my god, does that look horrific. It's so fucking bad. It's so brutal. Like, I can't think. It's like scanners level of like, like ridiculousness. Like, I'm assuming like people know what scanners is like the, the famous head explosion that they did. <laughs> which is like, it's up there with like Maniac, which is like a lesser known film, which also contains a head explosion which is like fucking ridiculous. They obviously, it looks like they've just got a watermelon and filled it with firecrackers, it's insane. <laughs> and I miss that from movies, don't you? Well, the insanely unrealistic but hilariously ridiculous explosion. Yeah, because yeah. it's just so over the top. And Robocop's full of them. It's like um, the Melting Man scene, which obviously we put a clip in, haven't we, the guy yeah. getting hit by a car. Um, a funny story about that is like, um, they absolutely said like this scene's not going to make it in. Like the people, um, I forget what it is in America, the um, the body who cuts films and awards it the classifications. They said there is absolutely no way we are letting this scene stay in this movie. And if it does, you get an X rating, which is basically like a death sentence for a movie in the, like the United States. Like if you want an R rating, you cut that scene out. And what Paul Verhoeven did is he got feedback from test audiences. It showed that that was their favourite scene in the entire movie because it's so fucking stupid and presented that to the censorship body and they went, oh, no one appears to be bothered by this, I guess it's okay. So the reason that scene made into the movie is because obviously test audiences found it so hilarious they refused to have it cut. <laughs> So obviously like, the people who were going to like, try to censor said, well, people will be offended by this. And Paul Verhoeven proved, no, they actually think it's funny. 
Okay, you're guessing keep it in. I don't think I've asked you, Brad, what are your opinions on ED209 from a design standpoint? Like, you know, as far as robots go, how cool do you think ED209 is? I never thought ED209 was particularly cool. Like, I know that it had like a big fan following, people loved the, the robot, but so, I, thought, I always thought it was shit. Why? Any reason why? It just looks so impractical. Well, I think that's supposed to be the joke, isn't it? Yeah. Um, one of my favourite little subtle details about ED209 is um, on the very front of him, he's got a grill. And it looks just like the grill on the front of a car. And that was a joke by you know, the prop makers. So Ed 209 is supposed to be like representative, like, you know, mass produced American shit that doesn't work as advertised. And it's supposed to be a joke about like SUVs and stuff like that. About how the grill on the front that looks cool but serves no practical function. The idea about Ed 209 is that he looks intimidating but he can't actually do anything. I do like those big giant SUVs that people buy thinking that it makes them look cool and they can't actually handle a hill. Well, like Ed 209 can't handle walking down a flight of stairs, <laughs> despite being designed for military fucking combat. So I think it looks cool, because he reminds me a lot of the robots from Future Cop LAPD. Yeah. Do you ever play that? Uh, no, you've mentioned it. Oh man, we need to play Future Cop LAPD. Do you know why? We talked about the sex wave, haven't we? The sex wave Future Cop LAPD yeah, attack. Yeah, no, I just, I just had to remember. Yeah, if you're watching this <laughs> clip, in Future Cop LAPD, go get that game, it's awesome for the PS1. Um, you play a robot cop who looks just like Ed 209, complete with a machine gun that you have dual machine gun out, but you transform into a car that hovers. And one of your attacks that you can have is you send out a wave of energy. I just call it the sex wave energy. <laughs> if you jump as you do it, it looks like every time you land, you just land with shock waves. It's awesome. Unfortunately, though, which is the annoying part, they did dramatically cut Kinney's like death scene. So that's why there are two versions of Robocop. There's like the, the regular cut, theatrical cut, and the director's cut. The director's cut has got all that footage put back in. And it's a real shame because obviously if you watch the theatrical cut, you don't really get the same like um, feeling from the film because the whole point of Kinney's death scene being so fucking violent is because it's supposed to juxtapose with the line delivered immediately after it by the old man of, I'm very disappointed in you. Because it's like, the, the that's it, you're laughing now thinking, about it, the juxtaposition of a guy getting absolutely fucking blown away. And it's like, you know, pieces of his body being flung into the air by these high-powered organ detonating rifle rounds being fired by this giant robot. And it just smash cuts to this old man going, I'm very disappointed. And there's another line in that which I feel gets overshadowed a bit. Delivered by an extra off camera where they go, oh my God, someone call an ambulance. And that joke's kind of lost if he only gets shot once or twice. Because you think, Oh yeah, definitely call an ambulance. He's been shot. But when you see him get, there's like a full 10 second clip where you see Ed 209 continuing to shoot his obviously dead corpse. And he smash goes with, call an ambulance. Like, what do you mean call an ambulance? And that was lost on theatrical audiences. They didn't get that joke, which is a shame. So you know a lot of Robocop lines by heart. Yes, I do. God, favorite three lines from Robocop. Um, I think Dead or Alive, you're coming with me. Just because I like the fact he said it like twice, once as a human, once as a robot. Um, buddy, I think you're slime. Just I like the guys laugh after all that black. He's like, <laughs> it's like I'm expecting like the opening salvo to wipe out after that. So that laugh is like the oh, like do you know the song wipe out. Yeah. Oh, and it's like, -na 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 like immediately after that, cause that guy is like, that's a fucking good laugh. And then the other line is that same guy goes, man, if I zip this up, and it's like where Nancy Allen looks at his dick because. Now, I've never been able to confirm it, but there is a rumour going around that the reason that Nancy Allen looks down is because that guy actually got his dick out. <laughs> I've never been able to confirm whether or not he did, because I can't find any interviews with the actor, but the rumour is he actually had his dick out and Nancy Allen's reaction to it is genuine. <laughs> well, we put the clip in, but we can't, because apparently we get fucking copyright strike for it. So unfortunately, you have to use your imagination what Nancy Allen looks like staring at what may be a very large penis. Or a very small one. Oh, we don't know. That would also draw the eye. It would, yeah. One. Or an average one. I think anyone getting a dick out in any yeah, circumstance. Yeah, yeah. Especially on a movie set mm. in the 80s. But no one's expecting it. Yeah, no one expects penis. Yeah. Finally, because I kind of have to mention this, according to Paige, several of the squibs that were placed on his body were located dangerously close to his penis. And for anyone who doesn't know what squibs are, he describes it as basically being like little firecrackers. So, when the time came to film the scene where he's shot several more times by Ed 209, all of those squibs next to his dong went off at once. And he would later report that it felt like he was being kicked in the nuts repeatedly for 30 seconds straight. <laughs> Which just goes to show that one, Kevin Page is a fucking good actor, and two, Calculon was lying about corpse acting being hard. 
I've seen better acting from- No wait, uh, about it being easy. For fuck's sake, I had that line straight away. Damn it, put the clip in. No, 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 I don't do two takes. What's your favourite thing about Robocop? It has to be that nobody watching it at the time when it came out realised it was a piss take. Like, it's obviously, people don't know, Robocop is a satire, like a lot of Paul Verhoeven's films in the 80s were. Similar to Starship Troopers, which we talked about, which audiences and critics also didn't know was supposed to be a satire, even though Neil Patrick Harris plays a psychic Nazi. And it's like, you don't get this is supposed to be a joke? Okay. And I think my, the best example of that I can give is the introduction to the film. Which, if you watch it, it opens up like a traditional, like, 80s era, like, action movie. Like, um, Murphy is showing him, like, this gunslinging, clean-cut cop. He's, like, he's spinning his gun around and stuff like that. And they show, like, a action scene where he's in his car and he's leaning out the window firing two pistols at once while a guy at point-blank range opens fire with a shotgun from the back of a van into the windscreen and no one gets hurt. And also you smash cut that to like two minutes later where like Murphy is getting like mercilessly blown away by every shotgun in the world at once. And like, I don't understand how people can watch that opening bit and think, this is very clearly over the top action. Like you'd see in like Lethal Weapon or something like that. Oh look how stupid this is, he's sat at point blank range with two pistols like this, not getting hit. And you smash cut to him just getting utterly blown the fuck up. Oh, oh it's one of those kind of movies. Like it's supposed to be a, a piss take and a satire of that kind of action. Like this is how that fight scene would actually go down in real life. I also love as well that a lot of audiences <laughs> felt really ripped off. Because you know, immediately after that when it cuts to black. Yeah. Um, in the original cut, it would cut to black for about 30 seconds. And that's supposed to be symbolising that Murphy died and then obviously he comes back. Even though it happens like 20 minutes into the movie, and even though the poster shows a guy as a robot on it, a lot of people in early cuts left the cinema. <laughs> they thought it was the end. They thought that was the end of the movie. And that is amazing to me. That is... Right, imagine, like... Someone today might be out there who thinks Robocop is the biggest ripoff of a film they have ever seen. So they saw the post with a robot man on it, walked in, and after 20 minutes, the main character gets horrifically murdered, and then it cuts to black. And there's just no resolution or anything. And they think that's the movie. So I think in the actual cut we got, it's about 10 seconds, and you can hear noise in the background. Yeah, it's like, like you... hospital noise, I think. Yeah, but in... <laughs> Like in the early cut, that was about 30 seconds long. It's symbolising that he's dead. That's like brain death. Because I think he worked out like, um, when the brain doesn't get oxygen for so long. That's all it takes to permanently die. Yeah. So he timed it to be exactly that amount of time to symbolise that Murphy completely and utterly dies and then is brought back. Because if you didn't know this as well, um, Robocop to Jesus allegory. Not a lot of people get this either. Even though there's a scene in it where Robocop walks on water. Also, as well, the film's perfectly symmetrical, which is hilarious. If you watch Robocop, it's perfectly like the film ends the way it starts. I talk about it in my commentary, go watch that. I can't be asked anymore, I'm hot, I'm hot, I need a drink. <laughs> so thank you for sticking with this video right to the end, see if we record a bonus thing like the last one. And I'd like to apologise personally if this is your first fact theme video. They're not ordinarily this shit. <laughs> is this out of order They're and messed not. up? Thought, like, this is what we have to do when a company tries to copyright strike, so we can't physically put any clips of Robocop in which kind of ruins a video about Robocop, but them's the breaks. But yeah, me and Brad, we do appreciate people watching this and we understand it is a video we've already done, which is why we try to put something new in for people who've already seen it. But well, I would like to like, say, if someone's watching this for the first time, hoping to say, oh wow, I didn't know that about Robocop. And then some random like six minute introduction of me chatting shit and then other clips of me chatting even more shit throughout. That's not what you want from a fact video, is it? But that's what we had to do, because uh, we're stuck in a rock and hard place to either let them keep taking money from the video, delist it and not make any money from it, or do what we've done now, re-upload it without any of the offending clips in and just hope people understand. So I hope people do. Yeah, we didn't want to re-upload it without anything extra in, yeah, because, because then the people who've already seen it will be like, well, what's the point? Yeah, so we thought we'd put something extra in. We have recorded just now like 40 minutes of footage of me and Brad chatting absolute bollocks because it's just me and Brad talking about Robocop. Oh God, no. Oh, my phone. Well, you actually... Oh God, that was some, oh, there's some, some beer is on my phone now. Oh dearie me. Oh fuck. My black rectangle that no one can tell the brand of so it's not advertising. Oh dear. It's wet now and now my ass is wet. Now I've lost my uh, train of thought. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We really do appreciate it.
<laughs> yeah, we, after this, if you're still watching, like you, you are the dedicated fans. These are the people who I appreciate the most. And also the ones that scare me the most. Because they're the ones that are like, you know what? I don't care if he's not being funny anymore. I'm just going to watch. Just because something might happen. I want to watch his face. See, I'm... I'm currently like slightly like delirious from feeling yeah. really ill, and you've you clearly. I'm have slowly to like melt. I'm slowly melting. This room is so warm. Because I've not been to the gym today, so I just feel really sluggish. 